We're talking about the World Cup, which is just about to kick off in Brazil in a few hours. With me is Paulo Sotero. He is the director of the Brazil Institute at the Woodrow Wilson Center and a former award-winning journalist. And from Porto, Portugal, joining us is football reporter Vasco Mota Pereira. Welcome to both of you again. Paulo, let me start with you again. NBC News here in the United States is citing some opinion polls about what Brazilians think of this tournament. They say that half the Brazilian population wish the games had never been awarded to Brazil, and six in ten people, that's just over half, say the tournament will not be good for the country. Doesn't that surprise you, especially as it's Brazil, where soccer or football is considered something of a religion? It doesn't surprise me and not only to the sense to the extent that we know that when the games were awarded to Brazil, 75% of Brazilians uh, supported the decision and thought that wonderful things would come uh, from it. Why? Because Brazil had at that moment a very, very popular, charismatic president, President Lula, and Brazil was, Brazilian economy was growing 6%. Uh, we don't have Lula anymore. Uh, and uh, the economy of Brazil has slowed down. It may be even contracting right now. So the context is different, explains the numbers, but I think the numbers tell something very important about what I mentioned already, the maturing of the Brazilian society. Uh, soccer is a religion in Brazil. Religion, as Marx wrote, is the people's opium. Uh, Soccer is no longer the opium it used to be uh, in Brazil. Uh, is something that we love, we do very well, and it gives an opportunity with all the problems to, for Brazilians to welcome uh, the world to a beautiful country. Right. Vasco, is it time perhaps for the world, when we look at these costs of staging these tournaments, allegations of corruption, etc., is it time perhaps for a body like FIFA or perhaps the rest of the footballing world to consider moving the World Cup to a permanent home? Well, <laughs> it's definitely quite... Um, I think it's a very good suggestion. The thing is, um, I, don't, I don't expect FIFA to, to, to open uh, their control over everything they have. Uh, if, if, you, if we take a minute, uh, to, if we just take a step back, it, you, we can see that FIFA basically uh, is a, a super state. It, uh, it's uh, above uh, states, it's above federations, it's above confederations, and they do as they please. And uh, the latest scandals revealed in terms of corruption and bribery and etc. Uh, surely reveal that something's uh, rotten uh, amidst all that. But still, I, I find it very hard to see the elites at FIFA just uh, accepting uh, someone else to step back in. Right. Paolo, uh, we've heard a lot about these allegations of corruption involving FIFA. There are now calls from European football executives for Sepp Blatter, the president of FIFA, to step down. Should he go? Yeah, it looks like a renewal of leadership would uh, uh, be a positive thing. I think uh, leadership is very important in here. If FIFA could uh, get a more modern type, forward-looking uh, person that could understand why people are so repulsed uh, by uh, those allegations of corruption, they are real. They involve coaches. They involve soccers, uh, so uh, soccer players. And uh, it, it would be a pity, a pity if they continue to allow this to fester because it could uh, disenchant people about soccer, which is really a game uh, of merit. You have to be good. Uh, and, and so uh, let's hope that FIFA gets itself to act together. Right. And Vasco, there have also been allegations of match fixing in the run-up to the South African World Cup. The New York Times here in the United States has published two lengthy investigative reports on what happened there. How much damage is this doing to football? On this side of the world, uh, I think there's more, uh, there's a bit more of, of, of uh, some worrying, more than actual thinking that it's uh, a menace. Uh, it's been some sort of an issue in Italy. Uh, there's been still some, uh, some noise coming from Eastern Europe, from Romania, for instance. Um, there's obviously some uh, cases of suspect uh, results uh, in Portugal inclusive, uh, and, but I don't think it's come to a, a very dangerous situation in terms of public perception. So I think people are still believing that uh, it's not that much of an issue and just 
ignore it a bit casually. They know it's there, but uh, we still tend to believe that uh, if we don't think about it, if we don't talk about it, somehow it will disappear. It's not on, on this part of the world. It's not that uh, frequent. Okay, Vasco, I want to stay with you. We're going to look at the tournament, tournament itself. It starts in just a few hours, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at the teams on the field. 32 teams going to Brazil. Uh, what are your predictions? <laughs> uh, the, the, the predictions for a World Cup or for a, for a Euro, European Cup um, are always quite difficult because if you think about it, it's not that many games, it's not that many matches. You have three matches uh, in a group that decide if you progress to the last 16 or not. So you really have to hit the ground running. Uh, if when it's, a, a, for instance, a championship, a normal league, a regular league, you have, I don't know, 30 or 34 matches during the season so that the, the corrections can be, sorry, that the anomalies can be corrected. On the World Cup, you can actually tr think that you're on a roll and just the first match doesn't turn out as you wanted or as you were looking for, there was some jitters and suddenly an expected win becomes a loss and you have to chase every result. So it's a very hard, So, but still not dodging your question. Um, I think Brazil will certainly be the, the, the top favorites, the contenders to beat. I think uh, I was reading a poll from the New York Times this, uh, a couple of hours ago, and basically everyone from every country believes that Brazil uh, is going to win the league, especially after last year's uh, Confederations Cup, which is some sort of dress rehearsal the year before the World Cup, and when they just ran out big winners. And I think at least for me, uh, I, I'm expecting Brazil to do well, but I'm also curious about how Brazil will cope with the pressure that comes when Brazil do not perform as well. There's, uh, there's, in Portugal, there's a bit of the same uh, syndrome, which is we're all behind the national team uh, until they, uh, I don't know, they stumble upon some lesser team, and then suddenly we're just criticizing and saying everything that's wrong and criticizing the, the okay. coach, the players. So if Brazil get off to a good start, I think there will be contenders. Um, Spain will certainly have uh, something to prove, and I think Argentina's uh, Leo Messi will want the title more than anything else on the world because he really wants to he really wants Argentina to identify, to relate to him. He wants to be their idol. They, he wants to surpass the great Diego Maradona. Okay, Paolo, your problem is who's Brazil going to play in the final, right? Uh, well, <laughs> I hope we get there. You know, I was born in 1950. I was two months old when we played Uruguay in the final, 16th of July, 1950. We lost. I'm still traumatized. I don't believe that lightning strikes twice at the same place. And so I believe that it will probably be, I don't know, you know, one team that Spain is a very important contender, but one team that I really would like to see again in the final is Holland. It is the best team that never won. I don't want, though, that them to win against Brazil well, in Holland Maracana. Well, Holland plays Spain in their opening match. Yes, uh, Brazil plays, depending on how, assuming yeah. that we do well in the initial games, I think we play immediately, uh, Vasco may correct me on that, I, we play Spain and then or Holland. But it would be interesting to see. But, you know, Argentina is there, Germany is there, Italy, remember, four times winner. Okay, right. So uh, we hope that our team is going to do well. Okay, I've got 20 seconds left. I have to ask you this. Vasco first, individual players. You've got the great Ronaldo. Who's going to be the player of the tournament? <laughs> I don't think Ronaldo will be it. I think his, his physical form is far from his best. I'm betting on Leo Messi. Mm -hmm. Paolo? Uh, I always cheered for Santos. Neymar comes from Santos. And I think uh, it'd be wonderful to see Neymar as the best play player. He, he really deserves it. Okay, we shall see. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you for joining us.